Fridays are awesome. I'm Carl Azus, and today's special edition of CNN 10 takes us in depth because you really can't go anywhere more in depth than the Challenger Deep, the deepest point of the world's deepest trench in the world's deepest ocean. We're talking about the Mariana Trench in the Pacific Ocean. National Geographic describes it as a scar in the Earth's crust. It's located about seven miles beneath the waves. The trench measures more than 1,500 miles long, and it's 43 miles wide on average. So we're talking about a pretty big scar overall, and the Challenger Deep is near the southern end of it. It takes a feat of engineering just to get there. It takes hours of diving to hit bottom, and it's largely an unexplored frontier. Even though thousands of people have reached the top of the world on Mount Everest, fewer than 25 have reached the bottom of it in the Challenger Deep. New Zealander Rob McCallum is one of them. On April 8th, he became the first person from his country to go there, and he went along with Tim McDonald, the first person from Australia to complete the feat. They sent us this video and everything else you're about to see. And I had the opportunity to interview Mr. McCallum about the experience not long after he hit rock bottom and then resurfaced again last month. Let's dive in. It's the last uh, unexplored frontier on Earth. Um, we know very little about this, this region, what we call the Hadal Zone which is that area of the ocean below 6,000 meters or 20,000 feet. You can't just get there in a normal submarine. What sort of vehicle does it take to withstand the pressures there? That's a very interesting question because pressure is uh, entirely relative. When a spacecraft goes up into space, uh, they're only experiencing a, a pressure change of one atmosphere between the inside of the uh, spacecraft and the outside. We are dealing with a pressure differ differential of around 1,100 atmospheres. So we dive in a titanium sphere, which is able to withstand 100,000 tons of pressure. Just on the hatch uh, through which we get into the submarine, just the hatch alone has 2,200 tons or around five fully laden Boeing 747s squishing down on it. That's, that's incredible. I mean. The Somebody can't go out and, and buy that. How does one acquire a vehicle like that? This vehicle was made for this specific purpose. It was designed and built by Triton Submarines in Florida, specifically to be able to voyage down through seven and a half miles of um, water column to get to the bottom. And that's why it's got kind of an interesting shape. It looks like a pillow that's on its side, and that's so that it can drop down through the water column very, very quickly. You said very quickly, how long does it take to get to that depth? It takes around four and a half hours to get to the deepest point of the world's ocean. We go down through the water at about six feet per second. And coming back? Uh, we release ballast weight on the bottom to, uh, to just spring us off the bottom and head for the surface. And so it's about a three and a half hour ride home. What are you seeing when you get to the ocean floor in the deepest part of it? This is the most fantastic part of uh, what we're doing. It's true exploration. You know, we never know what we're going to see. Uh, every dive has yielded something fascinating, often something new to science. Uh, we are seeing uh, creatures for the first time. We are discovering entire landscapes which were previously unknown. That's still a full day just in travel time. So how much time does that give you on the ocean's floor? We try to uh, stay down for three to five hours on the bottom. You know, it's a big investment of time and energy. It takes the entire team to get this vehicle prepared and get it down. And so we try to use every minute possible on the bottom. Our submersible has three viewports, one for each of the occupants, but also one central one that allows us to see down to the seafloor. But we're also surrounded by uh, very high definition cameras that are all linked to a screen in front of us. And we can look in any direction uh, outside. And that's important because we don't really know where we're going. We're almost always the very first humans that have ever been there. And so although we have a three-dimensional map that we've made uh, the day before, we need a very good um, view outside to see what's coming. 
you know, for humans, we don't really fear what we can't uh, sense. And so when you're in an airliner and you're looking out, you don't naturally think of the wind going past at 500 miles an hour and it's minus 50 out there and there's not enough air to breathe. You just if I can see a town or I can see a truck. And the same in the sun. There's no sensation of movement. There's no sensation of sound. Um, you can't hear or feel anything from outside. It's just a very peaceful, relaxing cruise uh, into the unknown. I think that we know so little about uh, the ocean that we barely understand what questions to ask, let alone um, have the ability to, to understand the answers. My role and the role of, of the team that I work with is to simply open the door. This is the first vehicle in all of human history that has the ability to reach the deep ocean uh, in any ocean at any depth at any time. It's, the, it's, it's a, akin to the Wright brothers with the first flying machine. This is just the first baby steps. I know the technology might be a way away from creating a sort of ocean exploration station that can withstand depths like that. But we have reported on there, there is more funding and investment in underwater exploration stations. I mean, how important would you feel those would be as contrasted with, let's say, the International Space Station? Both are important. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not taking a shot at space travel. But, you know, right. space is a vast void, a vacuum uh, that so far has proved to be lifeless. The ocean is nothing like that. The ocean is full of life, you know, right from the surface all the way down to the very, very bottom. I think before we leave home and start exploring the heavens, we should at least uh, explore our own backyard more thoroughly. I think that many of the answers to our collective future are going to be found in the ocean and some of those in the deep ocean. The answers to how we're going to handle all the carbon in the atmosphere, the answers to uh, the dynamics of our ocean and how we can arrest uh, the decline of the ocean, but also the things that we might discover in terms of um, valuable compounds for medicines and that sort of thing. So why do you think there's so much interest in space exploration when we could be exploring what we have right here? I think it's as simple as when we gaze up at the heavens, we, uh, we have a sense of wonder. Uh, what's out there? You know, what can we find? We always look skyward because we're terrestrial mammals. We, we, we look up to the heavens. When we look into the water, we don't really see that much. We see an opaque uh, plant, plane, a platform that we can pull fish out of, maybe go for a swim in, but we don't actually go too far down. You know, my dive was about 36,000 feet. Most humans never get below about 300 feet. So there's a long way to go yet. So it appears we've barely scratched the surface. And there are still so many questions in limbo, except how low you can go, because we know from those who've plumbed the depths and helped us both deepen and reach new heights of understanding. Doherty Valley High School, shout out to you, our viewers in San Ramon, California. We have one week on the air left in our spring broadcasting season, so we hope to see you again Monday. I'm Carl Azus for CNN.